everyone. Welcome back to Hope for Today. My name is Lynn Wilson and I'm glad you're joining me today. Grab your coffee, grab something, cozy blanket if that's what you need. We're going to just sit and spend some time between you and me and the Lord. There's nobody else around. It's just us. And I don't even know what's going on in your life, but the Lord does. He's got something he needs to tell you and me today. So last week, we talked about the Israelites walking in circles, and they were doing the same thing over and over and over, and how many times we do that. We talked about that last week. Disobedience, you know, you wonder why things in your life are not going the way you planned or you think they should go or the way, like I said, you planned it. Or And sometimes God has us in a holding spot because he's working. But usually I find, at least for myself, when I'm in a holding spot where I feel like maybe am I walking in circles, when I pray about it, the Lord gives me a sense of peace or uh, I always say a postcard from heaven where he just gives me an inkling like, hang on, don't go anywhere, stay right where you are. You might feel like you're walking in circles, but the answer is coming. And I get a sense of something, you know, enough where I can feel like, okay, I'm good. But when I'm walking in circles and I'm not walking with the Lord and I'm being disobedient and all the thoughts that come into my head that shouldn't, and that's when I I don't find myself reaching out to the Lord other than reaching out to people and complaining. Do you know what's going on? Do you know how many times I've done this? Yada, yada, yada. And I could find myself in this tizzy of events in my life. And that's when I'm not focusing on what the Lord has instructed. And that's what happened with the Israelites. They were disobedient. God had given clear direction, clear instruction. They refused to listen. They did their own thing and they found themselves 40 years later, still walking in circles. But today where I want to piggyback on that thought about, are you walking in the dark? How many times have you been home and the power's gone out? You wake up at night and you're, uh, you know, you got to find your glasses and you get your glasses on and your, your eyes are half asleep and you're, you're stumbling and you know, you put that flashlight in just the right spot, but you can't find it and you're tripping and you're just, you're making a mess, right? Trying to find something to get some light on the subject. And it's very um, disorienting. It's very distracting. It's very annoying when that happens. And how many times in life do you feel like you're walking in the dark? You're just tripping over your own two feet. You can't find anything. Nothing is where you think you put it. Um, Life just feels disconnected, discombobulated. That's one of my favorite words, discombobulated. So, um, you know, I want to read a verse to you. We're going to be in John, and I'm going to read this. It says, um, We've heard from the Lord in this passage that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. John clearly talks about God is light. In him there is no darkness. We claim to have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in darkness. We lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us. So, uh, you know, I heard this um, quote, this note, the other day, and it just really hit me. And somebody was preaching and they said, how many times have we been on a major roadway? You know, whether you drive that same road to work every day or you travel it or, you know, you go on this main road all the time and it's the same road. It doesn't change. You know, the lines are in the same place. The 
store on the right is still there, the store on the left is still there, the gas station's on the corner, whatever the case might be. It's the same road, but you can travel that road many, many times, and that road can take you in many, many directions. It can take you to many, many places. Because as you veer off this exit or that exit or that roadway, it will lead you to new places. You know, the Bible talks about our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same God. He hasn't changed one bit. And yet, God's mercies are new every morning. His faithfulness is new every day to us. Every day, God is gone before us to direct us to a new adventure. I like to say adventure. I don't like, I don't like being around negative Nellies. I'll call them that. People that everything is, well, whatever. Yeah, I know. Well, who cares? You know, that type of attitude, ho-hum. I don't want to be that way. And especially when I can feel myself getting down or I get in the dumps or I can feel that, you know, you feel that darkness taking over. I try and catch myself and turn it into something fun. It, is it a game? It's a game that I play. I'm a human being. I can pray to the Lord. I can read his word. I can walk with him and do all those things, but I'm still a human being. And the Lord knows that. So I've had to, you know, the Lord's given me common sense and he's given me a brain. And I need to use those brain cells to say, Lynn, you know, when you start to feel this way, then you need to make a change in your life before you go down the other side. Now, I don't know any of your backgrounds. My family, I have many people in my family that suffer from depression, and we have a lot of that, a thread of that running through our family. And I can feel how it affects me. There are times when I just get down because the wind blew the wrong way. There's no reason, there's no rhyme or reason. And I could be walking with the Lord and doing all the right things and the wind blows the wrong way, as we say in our family. And you could just feel this wave of depression or discouragement coming. So that's when I like to kind of grip it as much as I can before I fall into the pit of it. And so I like to say, God has a new adventure for me today. What does that mean? Well, for me, that means God's about to do something. But if I call it an adventure, all of a sudden it sounds more intriguing. Oh, you're going on an adventure? Where are you going? I don't know, wherever God takes me. You know, we can turn what the Bible tells us on how daily God has a plan for us. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what his plans are, you know, lately. And we can just get into this slump. Or I can wake up today and know that today is a day of his mercies. Even if the power went out last night and I couldn't find my glasses and I stumbled and I bumped my knee and knocked over a glass and tripped over the dog and, you know, whatever. I know today his mercies are new. His faithfulness is new. His direction will be clear. And I can tell myself I have a new adventure today because God is in it. So the same God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever just like that road, you kind of say, well, that road goes the same place all the time. Yes, but it can take you to new places all the time. Just like the Lord who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, every day can put you on a new adventure. Maybe it's the same adventure with a bit of a twist. Maybe it's the same adventure because that's where he needs you to be. Well, you can turn your own attitude into a better place to be. We don't have to walk in darkness. Just like the Israelites walked in circles because of disobedience, we do not need to walk in circles, nor do we need to walk in the darkness. The Bible tells us not to walk in the darkness. God is in the light. He is not in the darkness. If you find your play, yourself in a place of darkness, whether it's mentally or emotionally or this, you know, state of, you know, so just I feel like I'm in this state of, flux and I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Give it to the Lord. Lord, why do you have me where I am? Are you building something ahead for me to be involved in? Are you going to send me on a new adventure? Am I right where I need to be? I always ask the Lord. I said, you have to send me hope. 
I need some encouragement. I need to know I'm okay. I talk to the Lord about these things. I, I don't know how other people pray. I don't know how to pray. <laughs> Tell my husband this. I don't know how to pray other than just talking. Like that's, you know, we're women. We have words. We like to use our words. Um, I like to just pray to the Lord as if I'm talking to you. Like, Lord, I'm, I'm feeling really down today. I'm very blue. I'm really discouraged. And I might be crying. I might have tears rolling down my face. And I, Lord, I, my, I'm heavy hearted. Maybe I have a reason. I might need to list those things. And um, Lord, I'm, I'm feeling really discouraged. You know, I haven't seen you here. I haven't seen you there. I haven't felt your presence there or things like that. And um, I heard somebody talking about one of the trends in church. I'm not a trend person. I don't like trends. Trends come and go. The Lord does not come and go. The Lord is steadfast. And God does not create trends. Man creates trends. And he was talking about a new trend. Maybe it's not new. I don't know. Maybe it was new to us. A new trend in church where there's portals and God might be in this portal and you can feel his presence here. But if you sat in the pew over there, he might not be in that. That's not the portal where he is. Listen, I've lived here a long time on this earth and I know what scripture says. God is everywhere. He doesn't need a portal. You don't have to go find where the presence of God is. The presence of God is right in front of you. He's right inside of you if you have accepted him as your personal savior. If you are walking in darkness or if you are headspace, emotional, your state of whatever is feeling like you're in darkness, you need to pray to the Lord. Like I said, I just talk to him. You know, Lord, I, I'm feeling this way and there's no reason. I know there's none. And that, then I start listing all the good things that are in my life. You know, I got this, I got blah, 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 and I list them. And I might still feel that urge to feel down or discouraged or whatever. And, you know, I'm a human being. Those things happen. But I need to talk to the Lord about this because, Lord, this is not helping me, nor is it helping my family. It's not helping me serve. It's not helping me at work. And it's not allowing the, the my countenance to show the light of Jesus Christ. Remember, we talked a few podcasts back about the light attracts the gnats. And our life should be a light to others. And if we're walking in darkness and our head is down and we're always discouraged. Now, I'm not saying there's definitely times in life where you're going through grief or you're going through traumatic loss of something, maybe not a person, but, you know, a place or a position or whatever the case might be. Absolutely. You need to um, process that, go through that. But even in that, people have said, oh, you're going through so much and I can see you're struggling, but I can still see the Lord in you. That's because the light is still present. You're not walking in darkness. You're just walking in a adventure in life that's maybe not the best adventure. Maybe it's not the best roadway. Maybe this road has a lot of potholes and a lot of you know detours and a lot of rough pavement. But at the other end, you're gonna to get to where you need to be or you might, the Lord might tell you to take a side street and things will change and things will get better. We need to walk in the light. You know, when you walk in the dark, you're believing in lies and I can tell you when I personally get down or discouraged, you know, there's sometimes it's just an emotional thing. I don't know. You know, you go through something, whether it's hormonal, it's just, again, the wind blew the funny way and you're all of a sudden you're feeling weird. There's other times where, what was that? Oh, oh, what was that one? Oh, and people are saying negative things about you and then you start to, ponder on those negative things and you dwell on them and you start to believe in them and then those lies that you've convinced yourself of of your self-worth and you're no good and you can't and I don't know and this and that and we walk in this we walk in these lies we walk in this darkness God is not in the lies God is not in the darkness God is in the light and he is in the truth we need not to be walking in circles we need to be obedient and we need not to be walking in darkness. We need to walk in light where the truth is. 
you know, fellowship with other believers, that is part of the verse. And um, I want to go back and read that real quick, where it says, God is light in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But yet if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Listen, if you've got sin in your life and you're walking in darkness and you're just allowing yourself to believe those lies and you're sitting in it, you're, you're, you've, you're living in sin. Like that is wrong. We are not to believe in lies. We are to know truth. We are not to walk in darkness. We are to walk in the light. And if you need to confess that and have a clean slate today, do it. Because God will purify that. He'll get you right back where you need to be. Now, some circumstances might not change because it is where you are in life. But having the Lord guiding you and directing you and just holding your hand will get you through those bumpy parts of life. But when it says we have fellowship with one another, I sat with a Christian friend yesterday and good sister in the Lord. And we just talked about up and coming events at church and what our plans were. And then we just went off and I said to her, you know, one of the reasons I love talking to you, I said, because I can have my daily devotion and have a verse that God just planted on my heart and you get excited for me. Like I can share that with you. If you don't have people that you can share those great things, do you know what God just did? Let me tell you what God did for me. And it could be the littlest thing or the biggest thing. And they get excited because they see God at work in your life. What an encouragement to me when I see God working in your life. That builds me up. We need to build each other up. Don't be hanging out with these people that are negative Nellies and, you know, the word of God. And, oh, you know, the Lord hasn't been speaking to me. No, be with the people that know where the hope is found. There's hope found in our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the light. He's the truth. That's where you need to be today. If your headspace, if your mind is not in the place where it needs to be, make it a, make today your new adventure. Make today the place I am no longer walking in darkness. I refuse. Clean slate. Going to get this right. You and the Lord have a chat. And let me know in the comments below how things are going. We will catch you all next week on the next podcast.